is susceptible and vulnerable to doubt, to worry, and to the so many negative uh, things that may be incorporated to the many unfavorable events that we are experiencing in our lives. Some of us worry more than others. Actually, there are people who always worry. And they worry if they do not worry. Or they are worrying about their worries. And some people, uh, because of too much worry, will get anxiety. Even from thinking about all the things that we are worried about. Though worry is something that is normal, but it can overtake our lives, it can overwhelm us so much that we forget the God that we have. And we focus on the worry instead of knowing that we are serving the Almighty God. The God to whom nothing is impossible. The God to whom we can lean on. The God who is here and helping us constantly to figure out how to get through to the many circumstances that we are facing in life. We are forgetting that God saved us to be more than conquerors than to be warriors. That we need to live victoriously instead of in mediocrity, wherein we will be characterized by worries instead of trusting and putting our faith in the Lord. So tonight we are going to look at several verses that may encourage us to understand that we do not have to worry. That we do not have to let our times, our lives, our hours, our days, our weeks, our months, or even our years to be consumed in worrying when we can hold on to the promises of God that is written in the Bible and most of them are actually given or directed to each and every one of us. You see, we need to know what God has to say about worries. It doesn't matter if we are worried about tomorrow. It doesn't matter if you're worried about your rent for this month. It doesn't matter, matter when you are worried about your next meal. It doesn't matter if uh, are you worried because you're not, you might not be able to receive a salary next month. Or it doesn't matter even if you are worried about debt. God has wisdom beyond us and God can help us walk through all of our worries in life. In the text that we have read, it is a great encouragement not to worry when in Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 to 7, this is what the Bible has to say. Be careful or do not worry. Be careful for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your request be made known unto God. You see, the reason why we worry is because we think that there might be a need that will not be met. There might be something that may not happen. But you see, the Bible is uh, very clear when it says that we should not be anxious. That we should not worry. But instead of worrying, what we can do is to make our request be made known unto God. Amen. Why? Because we have a prayer answering God. We have a God who knows all of our needs and that God can supply all of our needs according to His riches and glory in Christ Jesus. If our God is the creator of heaven and earth, if our God to whom belongs the silver and gold, all the cattle, even the mountains, and everything that is in the world, if our God is the possessor and source of all things, why worry if there is a need? If we can make our request made known unto Him. Amen? So, let us get on our knees and pray to God 
Give our worries to him. The Bible says, casting all your cares upon him, for we care it for you, giving our cares to him, and let him handle it, and just trust him. And just, just uh, wait for his instruction so that we can do what he wants us to do so that everything that we worry about will vanish away. In 1 Peter 5, 7, very, very clear, as I mentioned a while ago. Casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. What is that care? The, our worries. The things that we worry about. The things that will make us anxious. Why do we have to cast all our cares? Because he careth for us. Amen? If he cares for us, then we can give to him all of our cares, all of our worries, and let him do something about it. That is why there is a saying, why worry when you can pray? And then conversely, why pray if you will still worry? You see, praying is a manifestation of faith, and worrying is a manifestation of doubt. So when we pray, we honor God. When we worry, we insult God. That is simply the truth. That is simply what is happening. Why will I worry if I know the source? Why will I worry if somebody cares for me? Why will I worry if that somebody who cares for me have the means to provide for what I am worrying about? So when you worry, you are just wasting your time. You are wasting your effort. And you are wasting your chance to grow in the Lord by practicing our faith instead of succumbing to our worries. Amen? You see, the God who cares for us is a God who is good. And the God who is good all the time. And He cares for us. And simply because He cares for us, then we can cast all our worries unto him. You see, worries is something that worry is something that is a uh, unavailing. It does not help. Well, let, let us go to uh, Matthew chapter six and start reading from verse number twenty-five, and we will read several verses here. Therefore, I say unto you, take no thought for your life. You see, this is not saying that we have to be carefree. This is not saying that uh, God is, uh, is telling us to live a life that is a que sera, sera. Whatever will be, will be. But he's saying that, therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life what ye shall eat, or what ye shall drink, or yet for your body, what ye shall put on is not the life more than meat and the body than raiment. Because the Lord Jesus Christ is trying to teach us something. He said, Behold the fowls of the air. He gave an example, the birds. Those that are flying in the air. The butterfly. He says, Behold the fowls of the air. For they saw not. You will not find the bird that is uh, planting. You will not find the bird that is uh, working. For they saw not. Neither do they weep nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them, are ye not much better than they? You see, the primacy of God's creation, human creation, we are the crowning glory of God's creation. We are created in the image and the likeness of God. And not only that, we are redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Amen? I am redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Our Redeemer is faithful and true. So we can, we, we can trust God. So not only that, he, that we are the crown, the crowning glory of His creation, but we are His very own children. We are His spiritual children. And the Bible says, if God has given to us His Son, if God had given unto us the Holy Spirit, what is it that God cannot give us. So why do we have to worry? 
Sabi ko nga kila Maribel, kila Milka, kaya nila pa kami magkakasama. Sabi ko, I choose to be happy. Mm. I choose to rejoice always. Mm. Yun ang pinipili ko sana, masustain ko sa tulong ng Panginoon. Why? Because I've been worried for a long, long time. And it only brought me sorrow and pain and heartache and problem and worry. So, I will just choose to trust God and be happy. I will choose to trust God and get on with my life glorifying God. Why? Because I am more important than the fowls of the air that my Father in heaven is feeding, feeding every day without fail. And none of them will fall down on the earth without His knowledge, without His permission. How much more me, I, His Son, how much more me to whom He gave His only Son to die on that cross so that I can be forgiven and I can become a child or a son of God. Why will I worry if I have a heavenly Father like that? Amen? Amen? You see, which of you by taking thought can add one cubit unto his stature? Sino rin sa inyo dahil sa pag-worry, tumangkad? Kayong mga pandak, worry kayo ng worry, pandak pa rin kayo hanggang ngayon. Amen? Buti pa rin ang worry, nakakapayat. Ayan. Pero kanya, hindi. Di, da, sinabi rito, tangkad ha. Baka sabihin nyo, may nagagawa naman pala ang worry pastor. Pag pumayat ka sa worry, dire-diretso ka. Sa hukay. Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit unto his stature? Why? Unavailing. It cannot do something. It cannot add something in your life. When you worry about food, it will not add food on the table. When you worry about your health, it will not make your health better. When you worry about your financial situation, it will not, it will not add to your bank account. Worry is something that is unavailing. It cannot help you, but it will push you down. What we call a life of more misery than when you start worrying. Look at 28. And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies. Eh no? Si lily narito. Isa lang yan, marami to. Of the field. How they grow. They toil not. Neither do they spin. Di man na, nanahiyang mga yan. Pero, tinan mo ang sumunod na verse. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of this. Tapos nirebuke tayo. Wherefore if God so clothed the grass of the field which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven shall he not much more clothe ye O ye of little faith. You see, if God takes care of the lesser creation. How much more, as I have said a while ago, the crowning glory of God's creation. So what do we have to do? Let's continue reading. Therefore, take no thought saying, what shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek, for your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. You think God does not know that you need money for your, uh, the renewal of your work permit? Do you think that God does not know that you need money for paying your rent and your electricity? Don't you know that God knows everything or every need that you may have. Because the Bible says, For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. So instead of worrying, instead of wasting our time, instead of sulking and whining and complaining and thinking negative things, He said, 
But seek ye first the kingdom of God. So why not do something for God? Than worrying. Amen. Why not do something for God? Than becoming a so impatient because of, of the uh, negative things that you think is happening in your life. Listen, shut up and serve God. Amen? Amen. That's what we need to do. Don't complain. Do not fight against other people. Shut up and serve God. Amen? Amen. But seek ye first. The kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. What all these things? Your needs. It will be added. Why? God knows it. And God promised that he will supply. So serve God. He will, add, he will add it. And verse 34. He said, take therefore no thought for the morrow. For the morrow shall take thought of the things of itself. Don't think about tomorrow. Tomorrow will take care of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. So what is needed today will happen today. And that is sufficient. Do not think about tomorrow. Because we know who holds tomorrow. Amen. And I know he holds my hand. Amen. Amen. So that is what we need to understand. That's why we do not have to worry. Look at Proverbs chapter 12 verse number 25. Heaviness in the heart of man maketh it stoop. But a good word maketh it glad. You see when you worry like a heart, like your body, you stoop. And when you, once you stoop, it is... It is as if life is leaving you. It is as if your strength is fading. It is as if nothing is happening. But if you are going to hold on to the promises of God, good words, then it will make you glad. Amen? And when you are glad, when you are joyful, when you are happy, you are teeming with life. And then you can be even an encouragement to other people who might be experiencing the same thing. You see, the difference between the unbelievers and the Christians is that even though we are at what we call uh, ends, uh, which end, or when even our backs are against the wall, we can still lean on God. And we can still have hope in this kind of situation. But the unbelievers will panic then believers will worry themselves to death. And sometimes also there's a difference between a carnal Christian and a, uh, a strong Christian, wherein the carnal Christian will tend to complain and to worry, but the strong Christian will tend to trust the Lord in any situation that he may face in life. You see, worries will weigh you down. Yung, yung, worry ka ng worry. Mangihina ka, manlalambot ka, manlulupaypay ka. Ito yung, ito yung worry na sasaktan ka at tatagos hanggang sa iyong kaluluwa. Na hindi ka na makausap, wala ka ng pasensya, hindi ka na, yung hindi na maipinta yung mukha mo. Why? punong-puno ka ng pag-aalala. E samantalang, meron namang mga salita ng Diyos na maaaring sa iyo ay magbigay ng kaligayahan, ng kagalakan, ng pag-asa. Pero, imbis na puntahan natin ang salita ng Diyos, ang pinupuntahan natin ay yung bagay na kapag, na kapag papabigat ng ating kalooban. And you see, you do not like what you feel when you are worried. It is, it is something, a feeling that is despicable. Something that, that you would not like to experience again and again and again. Why? Because it is weighing you down. Parang meron kang buwat-buwat na napakabigat na bagay. At hindi ka makakilos, hindi ka makagalaw, hindi ka makagawa. But instead of worrying, why don't you look at the Word of God and know that God will help you in order to overcome things that you may experience in life. Look at Philippians 4.13. I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth 
me. I can be able to overcome even my worry if I will trust the Lord. Amen? You see, there are, there are many applications of this. But when you worry, you can claim it. You can, you can uh, uh, claim God's promise that it is going to be okay if you will trust in the Lord. You see, when Paul penned this, he was inside the prison. So instead of worrying about so many things inside that prison, he chose to rejoice in the Lord always and to trust that through the grace of God, then he will be able to do everything by the grace of God. Amen? Amen. Oh, but pastor, he said, I can do all things so he can worry. Hey, but that is the negative side of it. That is the flip side of what God wants us to do. What God wants us to do is to trust in Him and not to worry. Amen? He's inviting us to have what we call peace and rest in Him. Look at Matthew 11, 28 to 30. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. So listen, no matter what is it that we are experiencing, God promise that it is easy, and it is light. But pastor, you do not know what I am going through. I know you are going through something that is easy, and you are going through something that is light. But you, Pastor, you do not know how heavy I am feeling right now. Yes, I know you are feeling heavy, but the truth is you are going through something that is easy and something that is light. But Pastor, you do not understand the gravity of my worry. I understand that the gravity of your worry is easy, and the gravity of your worry is light. Listen, instead of making your worries heavy, why don't you lighten it? By the promises of God. Because he says, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So I ask you the question, why is it heavy? Because it is not God's yoke. It is not God's burden. It is your own yoke. It is your own burden. That's why it is very heavy. Because God will never give us something that we cannot carry. God is a righteous God. God is a just God. God is not going to give us something that we may not be able to bear. And if that is something, it is something that we may not be able to bear, He will make a way of escape so that we can go that way. And overcome what is it that is uh, trying us or tempting us because God created us he knew our frame he knew our capacity and he will not give us something that will break us beyond repair if God will give us something that will break us it is something that is only breaking our pride and it's strengthening our humility and our trust in the Lord. Look at John chapter 14, verse 27. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you. Not as the word giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Why? Because it's given us peace he had given us something that the world cannot give and when God gives something it is something that will abide in us if we are only going to trust the Lord so let us uh, go back uh, a few uh, verses before this uh, let, let me just uh, check it John chapter 14 
Look at verse, uh, let's start with uh, verse uh, number... Fifteen. He says, If you love me, keep my commandments, and I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. You see, we have God in us. So, why will you worry when God is in us? Amen. The Bible says, If God be for us, then who can be against us? Even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you, and shall be in you. So this is the promise of the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. And I will not leave you comfortless, I will come to you. That's why when he promised that he will never leave us nor forsake us, it happened at the indwelling of the Holy Spirit when we got saved after the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. He said, Yet a little while, and the word saith me no more, but ye see me, because I live, ye shall live also. At that day ye shall know that I am in my Father, and ye in me, and I in you. He that taught my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me, and he that loveth me shall be loved of my father, and I will love him, and will manifest myself to him. You see, these are God's promises to us, that we will be loved. And we are loved. Judah said unto him, Not Iscariot, Lord, how is it that thou wilt manifest thyself unto us, and not unto the word? And Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him, and we will come unto him, and make our abode with him. He that loveth me, not, keepeth not my sayings, and the word which ye hear is not mine, but the Father's which sent me. These things have I spoken unto you, being yet present with you. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name. He shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the word giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Why? Because the Holy Spirit will be in us. And Jesus is the Prince of Peace and therefore the Holy Spirit will give us a peace that will abide in us. So how can a person with the Holy Spirit can really worry about things in life? About circumstances that may not be favorable, that, that may seem to be not favorable for us. How can we worry when we have God? on our side. That is why worry is sinful. It is, as I have said a while ago, when you worry, you insult God. Para ano lang yun eh? May mga anak ka. Hindi mo naman pinabayaan. Pinuprovide mo ang pangangailangan. Laging may pagkain sa lamesa. At naging matapat ka. Ginagawa mo lahat na magagawa mo. And then pagkatapos, sasabihin na anak mo, may makakain kaya tayo, tatay. Parang iniinsulto ka niya. Parang pinagdududahan niya yung pagmamahal mo sa kanya. And the same thing with us. When we worry, it is as if we are doubting God's love to you. Or God's love for you and me. It is as if we are saying that our God is unrighteous. That our God is withholding something from us. That our God doesn't care for each and every one of us. You see, when, they, when the disciples are in the storm and they were in the sea and they are worried and they are, uh, and they are doing everything in order to survive and then they saw the Lord Jesus Christ sleeping and they uh, wake him up and they said, carest thou not that we perish. And then he stood up 
and then he calmed the storm. What is the Lord Jesus Christ saying? I am with you and you worry. Don't you trust me? Parang ganito yan eh. May nagda-drive. Yung mga pasahero, Mama, ano ka ba? Huwag ka naman ganyan mag-drive. Mahal namin ang buhay namin. Sagot ng driver, mas mahal ko po buhay ko kaysa sa inyo. Alam niya, nag-iingat siya. Pero kaya lang, iba minsan yung isip natin. God cares and God knows what we need. But we have a different version of how we think about the things that are happening in our life. We do not understand that God allow all of these things in order for us to exercise our faith, our trust, and our confidence in Him in times like this. Why? So that whenever we find ourselves in impossible situations, we will understand that we are serving a God of the impossible. And that nothing is hard for the Lord. And we can always trust in Him. Amen? So, pagkatapos nitong service nito, paglabas, ka na mag-worry. Naku, baka January pa ang pasok. Patay tayo nito. Sana naman tayo kukuha ng ganito. Sana naman tayo kukuha ng ganun. Ito kasi puding na to. Walang ano, di ba? Kinto ganun. Hindi niya na yung genders. Oh, ganun. Oh. Tapos mag-worry ka, nagtutulala kang ganun. Kala mo naman, nung tumulala ka, may nangyari. <laughs> Kala mo naman, nung ikaw ay naglulupasay, may nangyari. Nangyari na dumihan ng ano mo, damit mo, naglulupasay ka. Pero wala talaga nangyari. But, if we can trust God, and serve God, even in the midst of worrisome, situation. Will not God honor that faith? Will not God see that we completely trust in Him? And will not God do what He promised that if we will seek Him first, then He's going to provide all of our needs. Let's take our last verse tonight. Before we end, look at Psalms 94. Verse 19. In the multitude of my thoughts, within me, thy comforts delight my soul. Sabi ni David, in the multitude of my thoughts, worry, may mga worry, maraming siya iniisip eh. Di ba? Dahil ko iniisip, sabi niya, in the multitude of my thoughts, within me, thy comforts. What are the comforts of God? Yung mga binasa natin, yung mga promises niya, ano sabi? Delight my soul. So even though there are so many things that David is thinking about, but when he looked at the comforts of God, it brought delight into his soul. Did David experience extreme situations? Remember, he committed adultery with Bathsheba. It is something that will consume your mind. He caused the death of Uriah. It is something that will bother your conscience. Their wives were taken by the enemies. And even his own people threatened to stone him to death. It can discourage even the strongest person in the world. The worries of a king to provide for all the needs of the subject. The worries of a person who is called by God to glorify him. All the concerns of the kingdom is with David. And he said that in the multitude of my thoughts within me, he said, thy comforts delight my soul. So worries may come or may enter the mind of David. But once the comfort of the Lord comes in, then worry will run away. It cannot linger in his heart. It cannot linger in his mind. Why? Because the word of God, the promises of God, is greater than all the worries that the devil, the word, or even ourselves may put into our mind. 
So let us be encouraged tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, we are in a dire situation. Nobody likes this. We blame the, uh, uh, the officials who might have caused this community transmission of COVID. But even the Prime Minister on Sen says that it is not the time to blame. But it is the time to be united. So if we will apply it into each and every one of us, it is not the time to worry. It is the time to trust God. Amen? Amen. And see for yourself. A month, two months, or three months from now, we will say that really the Lord made it come to pass. Amen? And all we can see later on are the blessings of God in our lives. So ladies and gentlemen, don't worry. Amen? Don't worry. Let us trust God. Choose to trust God and choose to be happy in the Lord. Shall we stand up, Father? We thank